I think all the newcomers have been waiting for a product like this to get started. This is a very, very cost-effective goggle product that's not a box pair of goggles from Iashin. If you're watching this video, you probably already know what this is, and you probably already know the specs of this as well. You can you know, see other videos on YouTube, as well as always go to the Banggood page, and I'm sure there's other places that are selling this pair of goggles as well. The link is obviously below in the description. You can always go and check out the specs. I have not turned this on yet. I have not worn it. I have not done anything. I literally just took it out of the box. And I saw renders of it before on the Banggood product page, and I thought it looked a little weird, and I really hoped that it would look and feel high quality. And immediately when I took it out of the box, I did not think this was a low quality product. It feels and looks like a high quality product. In fact, I think the design of this is far superior <laughs> to the, than Fat Sharks. Like it looks just so nice. But granted, when you look at a pair of Fat Sharks, this is a pretty dated design. They have been doing this for a long time now, and they have not. They, they don't need to change. They, they, why change something that sells so well? But over the years, they have kind of tacked on more and more features along the way, like the fan, the faceplate mask, and they've done some minor redesigning. But for the most part, it's just kind of like a like an ad hoc kind of basis to add all this stuff on. And so it's fine. I don't think it's a particularly okay. I'm not a fan of Fat Sharks just because it's such a high priced product, and you really it doesn't seem like you're getting much for your money. Unfortunately, the screens themselves are what is the high-priced item, but really for that kind of money, they could give us a better casing. They could give us a lot of new things. And I, and I know they have a new CEO, and I know they're working on some things as well, but for now, they're going to they're gonna have to pay, play catch-up with the several companies coming out with goggles over the next couple of months. Yes, that's right. There's at least four or five other companies coming out with goggles over the next couple of months. And when I took this out of the box, I immediately thought, wow, you know, this company made goggles from scratch and they did a great job on the design. Yes, it doesn't have a DVR built in. Yes, it doesn't have an external module, uh, receiver module, so they had an easier time fitting everything into a nice small package. But damn, this is a good looking product. I don't know why it's offered in black. I do not recommend the black because if you're using black in the hot sun, you're probably gonna get really, really hot because of the hot sun. So, yeah, I mean, it's got buttons here for changing the channels. It's got this for changing brightness contrast. It's got a fan. It has a very new, very awesome feature on the bottom. These dials over here, as you can see, are for moving the screens in and out. I think that will help compensate for people that use glasses and need diopters for fat sharks. I don't know. I can't comment on that because I don't wear glasses but maybe it can help me get an even better focus. These are to move the screens side by side. I like the fact that they're all independent. You can move both screens independently because not everybody is symmetrical. Some people's eyes are weird off to the side or something. Uh, it comes with this, this, um, these, this foam pad, but it looks really, really thick. So um, I usually I have a problem with my fat trucks. I gotta smash them on my face really, really tightly to just even be able to see the the screen well and clearly without blurring the edges. I think I'm probably gonna have to take this faceplate off and just like trim it a little bit to get my face closer to the goggles. They are extremely, extremely light. And uh, the ski mask does pop off as well. And the strap that it comes with is, it feels like it has more spandex in it than the stock strap that comes with the fat sharks. Now, I don't use the stock strap anymore since I went to this event and they gave us these straps which have a ton of flex in them and a ton of like spandex. I think this is from Pretty Fly FPV, these straps, but this strap is so much more comfortable than the stock strap that, I mean, <laughs> it's it was, it, it was a surprisingly nice upgrade that I did not expect at all. So what else comes with this pair of goggles? It comes with, of course, the antennas, comes with a USB cable, which I'm not totally sure what it's for. The instructions say it's a data cable, so that makes me want to believe that it has the ability to update its software. I don't know, I haven't plugged it in to find out yet. It comes with a battery, it says it's a 1000 milliamp 2S pack, and it's not unlike the Fatrock battery. It's, I mean, the Fatrock battery is pretty worthless that it comes with the stock one, and this one is probably similarly worthless. It does have a nice little gauge on it. It's a nice backup battery, but I really wouldn't recommend um, using it long term. I'm not sure why it has this balance lead on it, because, because uh, it doesn't have a place to plug in the balance lead on the goggles. So, and you're not gonna use it to charge because it only has two wires, so it's not a complete balance lead. But yeah, you get a battery with it. Uh, it's a nice starter pack. The instructions are a little interesting. It actually says that it does all the freaking channels, which is amazing. 
and that's a lot of channels. It includes the L band and the H band and O band. I don't even know what half these are. Anyways, the L band is like 5.3, which is the lowest band that we have technically not legal in the United States and many other countries, but it, it receives it, which is a really, really good thing. Uh, other things on the instructions that are interesting are this. It says that you can plug in an external DVR and it gives you the pinout of the 3.5 millimeter connector. And that implies that they're probably gonna be selling a DVR in the future, which is interesting. And that's it for the initial review like the initial observation I, I just took it out of the box now I'm gonna use them fly them and I'm gonna try to record in the screen and I'm also gonna take them apart to see what's inside I mean look at this design they put the plastic seam right here on the edge so you can barely even see it on the fat sharks you got like a freaking seam right in the middle of the goggles that make it look like a weird low quality casing like they really whoever did the product design for this I, I mean I really appreciate it it's such a low priced product so that we're not really expecting much but they really put the casing together well and it's 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 noticeable it's very very noticeable um, again I would not recommend the black version of this because it would get hot in the sun but yeah that's it I'm gonna try it next and then report back what I'm trying to show you here is how I recorded inside the goggles and where the goggles are positioned with respect to where I'm flying. I've done this before and it worked out okay. It's not perfect, but it gives you a better representation of what the screen looks like compared to DVR footage because DVR footage is not going to show you anything about what the screen looks like. Okay, so I'm not trying to misrepresent anything here. I'm trying to represent the product as accurately as I can. And you will notice there's a drastic difference in screen size here because there is truly a drastic difference in screen size. But before I talk about that, I'll talk about the, the fit and the comfort and the light leakage of the goggles. The fit is fine. I have a really large head and it still fits my face. I did have to trim the foam, but I was able to get it to fit. The eye adjustment, the focusing and the side to the IPD adjustment, the side to side adjustment worked out okay. I was able to get a single image through my eyes. It was difficult to get the convergence right and get the focus right because the modules themselves kind of move around inside the goggle case. So even when you think you got it right, you let go and it moves a little bit and it's a little bit blurry. But I was ultimately able to get it to the right point where I could see everything mostly clearly. Of course, I still cannot see from corner to corner without some blurring. Now let's talk about the screen quality. The screen quality is adequate not excellent not poor definitely not poor definitely definitely not poor it is not the worst screen i've seen by a long shot it is definitely not the best screen but it's definitely not the worst and it's closer to a good screen than a bad screen the contrast is good it's not unflyable in any way at all the contrast is is more than adequate it's good it's not the best it's good the colors are also good they're not the best but they are good the pixel density is also very good. It is very, very hard for me to decipher each pixel on the screen. So it's, it's a very smooth image and it's very good. The main problem is that the screen is tiny. Now I started flying on a pair of head, head plays and head plays, if you ever look through them, it looks like you're looking at a theater screen that's five times the size of the biggest theater screen you ever saw. It's enormous. And when I switched to my dominators, it felt like I was going from a theater screen to a postage stamp. Now, after about a day, I got used to the Dominators, and I was flying way better with the Dominators than I ever was with, with, the, with the head plays. I personally think that's because I wasn't looking around the screen so much. I could kind of just look towards the center and see where I was going. And I still think that the Dominators need to have a little bit larger screen. I feel like the field of view needs to be a little bit larger to give me a little bit more, not immersion, but the ability to see the phantom branches coming up. The Dominator HDs or HD V2s, V3s, whatever, they have, the newest one, has a 55 or 60 degree field of view. I think that is perfect. But they have a 4.3 screen, and I personally prefer a 16.9 screen. So I prefer the Dominator V3. Now, comparing my Dominator V3s to the Eishin goggles, well, it's like going from a theater screen in the Dominators to a quarter of a postage stamp. I mean, this screen is so small that I could barely make out the text of my OSD. Like, it's just too tiny to be comfortable to fly. Now, it's not unusable, but as I'm flying around this area, if I had not flown around this area before, 
I would be fearful of flying around the area because I, I cannot see what's coming up in front of me because the trees are specks and the branches are non-existent. There's no way you can see branches. Now, it's flyable. It's not unflyable. And the screen is nice. It's not a bad screen. But you run into this trouble where you're like, oh, well, I mean, it's not a nice experience flying. And I personally... I think that I would prefer a box pair of goggles, even though these are so much nicer and so much better. But the view that I'm looking at, I mean, the screens are just so small and difficult to decipher what's in front of you that I I think I would prefer the other Iashin box pair of goggles that I have because I can actually see a larger image. But now let's take a look at the inside. Now here, I've taken apart the goggles, and one thing I forgot to talk about was the reception of the goggles. And the antennas that I was using in that video were these two antennas. This is a, a Speedex Pagoda and then a Pyrodrone Circular Polarized, which is a Foxier something or other antenna. I usually like, if I'm going to use two Circular Polarized antennas, I like using, using two different brands because they're kind of tuned to different frequencies, so that works out. Uh, the faceplate that I was using, I kind of chopped it up a bit so that it, it squishes down on my face a little bit easier. I have that issue where I need to kind of smash the goggles on my face to be able to see what's going on. And it worked out nicely. The fit is okay. It's not the best. I have a big nose, so it's kind of difficult to position it and get it to, you know, position around my big nose. The battery is good. It's very nice. It has a USB port for charging, which is very interesting. It surprisingly lasted all like 40 minutes that I had it on without problems, and it still says it has three out of four charge. So, I mean, it's a pretty nice battery. I'm, I'm more impressed with the battery than anything else. And like I said before, the strap is also very comfortable. So they got the casing down really good. And the top of the casing also, I mean, even from the inside, this, is, this doesn't feel like the cheapest quality stuff. The finish on the casing is very nice, and it's very good. But now let's take a look at the inside. So you can see here it's got a little impeller fan, which I wasn't really flying in an environment that was that would have fogged up my goggles, so I couldn't really test it and say if it works well. It seems adequate. It seems as good as any other Fat Shark uh, fan. I mean, it's not going to be great, but it is an impeller, and I don't know. I think Fat Shark is just a regular fan, not an impeller. And so what it's doing is it's blowing out this little hole, this little slot. And if you look at the faceplate, it's got this little channel in the back of the faceplate, and it's kind of directing the airflow into your eyepieces, which... Seems like it should work fine. Seems reasonable. But now let's take a look at the inside. No no surprises here. There is no real diversity in here. Yoshin has a bad habit of putting fake diversity on here. I'm not sure why they even decided to put a um, receiver in the pair of goggles. I, I think it would have been much nicer. Or maybe they could have just chopped the price a little bit more by not including a receiver and just putting an external module bay. Of course, they would have had to change the casing design a bit and make it ugly, uglier, but it probably would have made it a higher value pair of goggles. Um, fake diversity, but it seemed to work out fine. The reception was pretty good. I know you saw some black blinking in the video when, uh, that I was recording with my, with my phone inside the goggles, but um, I didn't see any of that when I was flying. I don't know if that blinking was representing it switching back and forth, forth from the antennas or not, but the reception was surprisingly good. It wasn't terrible at all. I mean, I wouldn't call it terrible at all. I, th I think it was pretty pretty darn good, actually. I think it was better in reception than any of the box goggles, the cheap box goggles that I've tried. So, you know, kudos there. And I can't really decipher everything that I'm looking at, even though I've, I've, I've worked on other goggles. Um, I can basically tell you that the power goes in here, and uh, this is the BEC section of the board, and it seems to be, like, similar to any other PDB BEC. That's the receiver module over there. And um, this switch here, this, this multi-position joystick, will give you uh, your brightness contrast adjustment, and this one changes your channels. You hold it to go up in band. And as you saw, you the channel band was on the screen the entire time. I fiddled with this thing for, like, 10 minutes trying to get the actual display off the screen and it just is there all the time which which is nice that it tells you what channel you're on but i don't need to know what channel i'm on all the time <laughs> it's not it would have been nice for it to just fade off hopefully the usb port on here is an, is the port that they could use to update the firmware and actually update that so it doesn't do that all the time so now i'm going to show you a really close view of the board for those people that actually do know what they're looking at so that they can tell you or they can tell me in the description if this is quality build or not i mean it looks pretty good the quality looks pretty good the things are all the all the components are on there pretty tight i'm not sure what this this pinout thing here is for uh, i'm sure that somebody will figure out how to hack this and put an external module on but i'm not so sure it's worth it and i'll discuss that in a little bit let's look at the other side of this board so the other side of this board take a close look at it again get it to focus there you go nice board not bad 
And now let's take a look at the modules. Remember when I said that when I was trying to focus it, it wasn't really focusing so nicely because the module moves around? I mean, the module moves around. And it's not that it's like the, the whole like bay is loose or something. It's screwed down tight. It's the module actually sliding around on the rails that's loose. So you'll get it in position, and it'll just kind of move a little bit, make it a little bit blurry, so it's kind of annoying, which is fine. The screens are just really small. The number one thing that I wish that they could improve in these goggles is just, just put larger lenses in them. I mean, they're just so small. If, if all they did was put larger lenses, I really think that we would be able to see the whole screen without blurring all over the screen. Uh, okay, let's see. What else can I say about them? Oh yeah, they're RPSMA, so that's kind of annoying. You, if you don't have RPSMA antennas, you're gonna have to pick up some RPSMA antennas. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. Now, now let's discuss the potential value of this product. Um, as I hinted at before, I it's it's very difficult for me to recommend this product because it's just it's just borderline usable. I don't know if it's better than a box pair of goggles. I think I would personally prefer a box pair of goggles because at least I could read my OSD. While the screen in a box pair of goggles might not be optimal, it's probably, some, the one that I have, the two that I have are very comparable. They're like $40, $30, $37 box goggles. I think both of them are from Iashin actually. They're comparable. The screen quality is comparable to this. It's just a much larger looking screen so I can see more about where I'm going. And I, I think that this product falls in the same category as I keep saying in many of my other videos, which this is the cheapest goggle product on the market. And while I was really hoping that it would be a good product, a decent product that I could recommend, I don't know if it is. For 160 bucks, they're now 160 bucks. On top of that, if you want to get an external receiver module, that's another 40, 50 bucks. And then if you want to get the DVR, I'm sure they're going to sell that for another 20, 30 bucks. So it's not it doesn't end up being that cheap and now you have all these pieces all over the place that are a pain to just manage and carry and you know use in general so i don't know is it really cheap maybe it's just cheap and not actually cheap hard to decide hard to say i i mean it's it's the cheapest goggle product on the market and like i always say buying the cheapest of everything is not always the best value and in this case i would also say that there are at least five other goggle products I personally know of that are coming to the market and there's probably a couple of others as well. Two of them are already on their way to me. One I received a couple days ago just for testing and feedback. And so I'm, I'm, I'm assuring you, I promise you, there are five more products on the way. They probably won't be cheap. They will probably be in the $250 to $450 range with or without a receiver module. But I would say if you're gonna spend over $100 on a pair of goggles, your money is probably better spent on a higher quality pair of goggles with a nicer screen that you can see. Even if this pair of goggles is nicer casing and everything is newer and more, more interesting to you, it's not gonna serve you well. It's gonna be difficult to fly. And while you can fly and it's probably fine for just you know quick little Sunday races, what are you actually getting for spending all this extra money compared to a $40 box pair of goggles? That's it. Oh yeah, I, I, in the description below I've left a link to um, some other DVRs that you might be able to, might want to use. And also a link to uh, an external receiver that I personally think is one of the better external receivers that you could get on the market right now, or actually has been for a long time. And um, that's it. Feel free to ask any questions. I hope I did a thorough job of reviewing this product, and I hope you found it informational and, and enough information for you to make up your decision about if you want to pick up these goggles or not. I will answer all the questions in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to floss, because flossing is always nice.